Check, check, check. Microphone check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The Gemini Scorpio podcast episode zero two one is full effect zero right now. Two one. Mr. J, who I'm here. Shade is here. You gotta talk into the here. mic, babe. Come on, man. Act like you know, man. Put that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like talking to the mic. You got whoa. You said act like you got. You, know. you got to lift it up. You want, you want to lift it up for me? Please do me do, do me something. So I heard that people like when I do my yay. Who said that? Nobody. I just wanted to have a reason to do it. I heard people like when I do my. <laughs> Girl, don't nobody. <laughs> Whatever. Yo, we already know so episode zero two, two one is in one. full effect right now. The whole gang is here. Actually, the entire gang is in the building. Let's yes, do it. Wyman is in the building. Monique, Monique is in the building. Jewel. Alex- Alexander Alex- the, the Blanc. Blanc. <laughs> Alexander the Blanc is in the building. Hey. Her, first of all, happy Resurrection Day, everyone. Mm-hmm. We're gonna give the we're gonna give thanks where it's due. You know, yeah. very grateful we're here today. We thank God for another day on his Sunday, on his day. And mm-hmm. we wanna make sure we can't go to church, but we're gonna make sure church is wherever we are. I mean, that's not true though, because they said anytime you in the presence of more than one person two or more people talking about the Lord, it's church. Isn't well, that what they say? Church is everywhere the Lord it, is. Yeah, okay? I mean, where two or more are gathered in his name, he's amongst them or something like that, right? Yeah, they said it's a church. That's yeah, a church. Yeah. Right. So we, it's I mean, church right now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Church, so, but I'm a little unorthodox because, you know, I'm smoking hookah and, and drinking, I'm drinking champagne. But however, and should we authentically, drink? <laughs> authentically myself, God is pleased with me in every way and shape or form as I do walk better and get better in his name and on his journey. So... Praise the Lord. Here we are. So Happy Resurrection for? Day. Um, I'm thankful for life. I'm thankful for maintaining stability, family, friends, the podcast, um, just life. Honestly, we are here. We're not, you know, without anything. We have all our daily bread. So I am happy and I am thankful internally. I'm thankful. thankful. I'm thankful for. Gratitude. I'm thankful for the power to have strong will. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people uh, take for granted just to have willpower. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of shit don't be going right. Yeah. And the fact that you can wake up and be like, you know what? I'm gonna dug it out and I'm gonna I'm gonna persevere through it. Period. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for uh, my family. I'm thankful for friends. Um, I'm thankful for opportunity. And most importantly, man, I'm thankful for life. Yeah. What Here's about y'all, that. uh, Alex, uh, Jewel? What y'all thankful for? For me, I'm thankful for a lot of things right now. I'm thankful honestly with everything that's going on for the opportunity to be able to still have a job yes working from home exactly and just getting myself to a space where i'm able to just take care of myself and yes. you know, focus on me amen amen amen, amen. alex oh preacher man alex come on let's go let's go man deacon blanc uh, i'm just thankful for life man to hey, be yeah. honest uh amen to be able to create that's what I'm thankful for. Like, be creative you know, and, stuff. and speaking of, you know, what you said of things going wrong, I just want to let y'all know I have a slight attitude today. And I'm going to just tell everybody because it's really frustrating. And I know y'all been in the car, right? I know y'all been in the car and something was just there and then the car loses it. Like, it's it's in the seats, can't find it. Go to Starbucks, go get a cup of coffee. Now I got to go to Walmart. I can't find a damn car that I ain't even get out the car. So I have a slight attitude that that didn't go right. You know, I'm, I still got my coffee and we still made it work, but I still am looking for the card. Okay. Oh, shit. Well, all right. Yeah, you better find that card because. But well, anyway. Chase card. But anyway, before we get into that, right? Excuse me if I might be a little um ignorant, but I never really hear people say that, that they're thankful on Easter. Why, like, why is it? I only hear that like on Thanksgiving, Christmas, but like, is it because I, I haven't been uh, in the church in a while or? So what do we celebrate on Resurrection Day? Is it the day he, the day he rose from the dead, right? Correct. Right. Yeah. All right, bet. But what so does, what's, what's the usually the word is, at in church? Well, the point is, you know, we're thankful for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, today, mm. and it's all about that. You know what and I mean? Without him, it will be no it, us. It will be no us, and any of this gratitude that we have today. So I think a lot of it is celebration of that. It's not more so. It's a thankful, you know, I think anytime praise and worship is a thankful spirit anyway, mm-hmm. but it's really about that. So that's right. probably why it's not like, well, what are you thankful for? Well, because everybody today on celebration, well, I'm thank you him. for Jesus Christ, Lord, so Savior, if I'm saying. You want to lead the, uh, the podcast in the prayer or is that, is that appropriate? Right, no, that's cool. Let me put my hookah, let me put my hookah, let me put my hookah on pause. 
Okay. <clears throat> All heads bow and eyes are closed. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. Just again, just be thankful for everything you have given us. Thank you for giving your only begotten son to us. God, we thank you for every piece of this journey that you put us in here every step of the way you've been with us you've been in our mind our thoughts we ask you to continuously be in our mind and our thoughts as we go forward in your lifestyle god we know everything that's going on is all in your will and you know it's going to turn out okay so let us free ourselves of fear worry stress god we ask that you continuously bless our finances bless our household bless our stability bless our minds most importantly that we are able to persevere in times like these god we want to say thank you we appreciate everything especially on this sunday of what you have given us and given us this day's life in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen, amen. now let's get to the potting let's get to the podcast you feel me? Jesus picks, allowed us picks, to be here and act back. the fool. So that's what the hell we going to do. Look, picks back up hookah. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. for. Hey, listen. Picks I told y'all before. Listen, man, I thank God for everything. When I go to the little corner store and I be finessing, I thank God for that. Listen. But look, let's listen. talk about how you got almost caught the other day. So we in Royal Farms. And you know how they always got the scanner. And don't ever be nowhere with a self-scanner because you know it's a finesse. Because I'm going to skip something. I'm Cheese skipping done a couple skip. things. I'm going to skip something. Nigga, what? So Jay always is thankful every time we make it out safe thank, and sound and nothing Jesus. happens. He was like, thank you, Jesus. I was able to finesse. But this one That's a time. Blessing. This one particular time we in here and pressed old Betty in the back. Like, um, I don't think you scanned everything. And I was like, yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. How do you know? Son, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Like, I think I changed the. I think I made Royal Farms change the rules because every time I go Jay, to Royal Farms now, somehow, it's somebody behind behind the counter. It was no, never nobody Jay behind some, the counter. It's probably because Jay somehow got somebody's employee ID. And he be punching it in the motherfucker. You know how, and like, I think they probably don't work there anymore. And this <laughs> nigga's still coming in like doop, doop, doop sales, 60% off. I don't know what it's giving them. But I know they probably was like, nah, some don't add up because this person don't work here no more. And somebody's still using their code. Well. Hey, man, thank the Lord for the finesse, man. Because okay. without you. We, we cutting that out the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you, you we got, cutting that out. Listen, you got to thank God for the finesse. You know how many times that I didn't have or we didn't have and we was able to finesse and then we had? Some, that's magic. You know how many times, blessing, I, don't you know know how many times blessing I forgot the deli shrimp under the, the thing and I had to get out <laughs> and now I got a whole pound of extra shrimp that I didn't have to pay $25 for it Amen by to that. accident. Amen to that. It was... <laughs> That deli shrimp be like thirty dollars, twenty five a pound, get two pounds. And don't have them broil and steam and season it for you because they might actually extra yam on that joint. Yeah, so, listen, man. you know, we just thankful in a grateful spirit. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for you know everything, God, because that was bad. I'm Let's sorry. get into this podcast. All right, well, all right. How was this week for you, man? Um. Okay. So this week I finally like. So I've been doing well with being home. I do miss just have. It's not that. I don't mind being home. I just don't like to be told that I have to be home. Mm. So it's a different thing when I have to, when I'm like, I just want to be home. And it's like my choice because then I feel like I'm in charge. Well, when I have to be home and it's like, you need to be there, it gets a little annoying. But I've been doing very, very well with it until the end of the week. I just kind of was like, Ugh. I just want to go do things that I would like to do. Like, you know, I, like I want to go on a hike. I want to go to the thrift store. I want to, you know, hit a museum. I'm off like normal break time. If you're off from work, you know, you want to go do some fun things. I want to take a Maya to Sky Zone. I want to do all these things that I really can't do. And it was just really getting annoying. We can do all that. Listen, we got There's a big no bed in it. We got a big bed in it. Nobody's in jump. It's not Sky Zone. Man, we can make it. We can turn it to no, Sky it's not. Zone. We it's take never going to be Sky Zone. Unless you're going to go, unless room. you're going to trampoline this whole motherfucking place, take out every bit of furniture in this motherfucker and create a bounce frequency that's gonna bounce me through these motherfucking ceilings it ain't gonna be or we can just use our, emo our imagination we take everything out the limb room yeah, right no. you put the big ass bed in here should we no. you take Amaya bed in here the we get to jump it from bed to the, bed you or, flip some shit it's or, Sky Zone or, or the point is I don't wanna be in this motherfucker I wanna be at Sky Zone I wanna be in Sky Zone's environment and not necessarily even Sky Zone shit I wanna go to a day party okay? we had a day party yesterday shit was no we, we did not we have a day party yesterday. Yesterday. we had the music we had no the it was not a day party party it was not it's a day, day party. party it was not a day party jay opened up Open the balcony the door. door and was like woo <laughs> a day party wow his day party is and lit that's not it that's not the what i'm talking about i'm trying to be inside griffin i'm trying to be I, you know what I'm saying with the little psh, sprinklers coming down while I pop, you know what i'm saying so what the hell? On the nah not at all but i just want to see it like i want to see i, I want to see the bottle wars i want you know what I'm saying? i want to see the whole shebang okay i want to be there i don't want to 
it to be here because one, I don't like people messing up the shit in here and I don't like people stepping. It's a lot of things I don't want why I wouldn't want it in here. So period. There's a lot of things you don't want. Yeah, I know. That's Listen, a lot of things I want and a lot of things I don't want. You know I was what satisfied with the day party we had last night. That shit was lit. It was yesterday, not a you know day party. That shit was it was popping. Jay's line brothers and two other people. Your here. friends was here. You know what I'm saying? The, I, yes, my friends was here. Monique pulled up. Monique did pull up. Yes, but that's not what I wanted. Okay, love them all dearly, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted to see people that I don't normally get to see. We've been seeing the same people in rotation because, you know, we can't really see nobody. Bro. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to see outsiders, people I don't see. I'm, oh, I'm like, yo, I ain't see you since oh, high school. I get it. You trying to see that, you know that nigga you was talking to that you ain't seen. Oh, I get it. Like, work bay. I, makes sense, baby. I get it. Everybody got to work, baby. I mean, People listen. just be making stuff up because I said what I said. I said, I want to see, yo, I ain't see you in a minute, yo. What's up? Pull out, you know what I'm saying? Take a shot. Come on. Cheers. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, you know. Maybe it's just me because my experiences in the club don't go like that. It's just be like, oh, what up? But that's not even. We, a- we see, yeah, probably because I'm working, but still. Yeah, just- well, yeah, it's work for you. But when I go out, it's because I want to have a good time. It's not because I'm going out for work. I work, I work. So Some. it's my, my my time. Like, I don't work in that environment. Like so it. me. I don't like it. Sound like a thought thought behavior to me. I don't like it. Mm-mm. You can't be having too much fun. Like not like that. Mm-mm. Keep it to a minimum. I don't like your stink ass attitude. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's you can't even okay. Do it right. All right. Whatever. Babe. All right. Look. Nah. What I will say, in all fairness, and I said this last week because I've been going to work. Like I've been working like a shit ton of work. I'm not really pressed because I'm cool. I've been going to work, but Sade just don't be going to work. She really be here. Well, no, I, I go like, to work. It's just right, right here. here. The same yeah. where, the same That's place I mean. I'm That's filming I mean. the podcast, the same place I'm watching the movie. I'm teleworking right here. I'm having talks with Amaya right here. I'm in the same spot umpteen hours of the day. Yes, oh. I don't want to see this couch anymore. I loved my green couch. Now, turn it blue. Let's put a blue blanket over top. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, get creative. And see, Sade. I don't think people understand the work from home stress of it all. You, Yo, know, you like, ever you work? Be wanting to get Jewel, you ever work from home work. and can't wait to leave work? Yo. Like that's a real feeling. Like I'm at work, at home, can't wait to leave home work. You know, I ain't gonna lie. You work know what I don't home. understand? People, like people work from home be complaining about. Like is they getting on my nerves? Like it's all it's, it's this and that. And I'm like, yo, wait. If you get off of work any other time, you get off of work at five o'clock. If you're supposed to get off work, work at five, I get off work at Well, I'm just saying hi, but that, okay, Sade, come on, like. I'm just saying. <laughs> if you're different. That's five. But I'm not. Talking, I said if, right? Okay, boom, got Damn. it. Damn. If you're supposed to get a work, if you're supposed to get off work a certain time, you are you, and your mind it should be scheduled to get off at that certain time. People will literally be mad because they be working until that time when they're at home. Like, yo, like that's what you're supposed to work. That's what you're supposed to be doing. If you was at work, you wouldn't be doing anything else. You wouldn't be in the house. You wouldn't be no. chilling. Like, you would be at work until this time. No. I get you, Jay. I get you. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, it's still like when you're home, that's that's where you're you're at peace. Right. You feel me? It's like a safe haven. You trying to chill. Like that's why I said earlier, like being able to like find that balance of like yes. taking care of myself so it's right. like it can get frustrating and sometimes it can get a little foggy right because when i wait. come home i'm supposed to be you know exfoliating in my face yeah, getting some like of my laundry done too. chilling putting on a movie i'm not supposed to be opening a laptop going through files in the same place that i do that at no and let me ask you this y'all do it seem like now that you working from home because i know for me it seemed like this uh-huh like do it seem like they got you doing like yo mad extra shit extra shit i'm like first of all i ain't even do all this at the damn desk why am i doing it now somebody did say that like it's like they're like they're like working you extra hard like to fulfill the fact that you're not in there but you know what somebody made a um Somebody made a valid, hold on, let me answer. Say hi, Corinne, you're on the podcast. Say hello, it's Slim C. Slim, no, what's she gonna say? (laughs) Slim C at Gym Fitness just called on a podcast. I'm gonna call you back in a second, shorty. Okay. Okay, bye. Bye, guys. (laughs) See you. Um, So, all that to say is, yeah, like, I'm just doing too much. They got me doing too much right now. Like, and like, and then what irritates me is it's no more downtime. So like, you know, when you're at the desk or you're at work, like you, you leave, you go take your break, whatever. Yo, these motherfuckers be calling me no matter what I'm doing. If it's my break and I'm making breakfast, they're still calling me. Fast. If it's my break and I'm, it's my lunch break, they're still calling me. Send me something. I need you to do something. Let's it's like, damn. about the meetings too. Right? Oh like, my God. 24 seven. I'm always on a meeting. Always on a meeting. And then they just schedule random ones now because they know you at home. So it's not no, oh, they ain't busy. They be like, hey, we're having a meeting in five minutes. Like, right. what? I just had a meeting an hour ago. And then it's like, 
like you still want me to get work done. Yeah, like like, like work. That. Like I'm not doing that. It's too annoying. No, I don't like it. I just feel like, man, y'all motherfuckers just gotta be grateful that you home. Yeah, you and your own. grateful is definitely grateful. However, it does not take away the annoyances that come with it. I think everything has their fair share of pros and cons. Like everything, anything in, in excess is not good for you anyway. Mm. So all of it is still has its pros and cons, period. Like, you know, there's things I miss about being work, but there's the cons that being in the building as well. Shit. That's true, that's true. That's you true. know? I'm, yo, mm-mm. I don't have those issues or those problems, man. You know what I'm saying? So when I see them, I just be like, yo, just... Just go to work. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If you tired of being in the house, take that shit downstairs. Like, but downstairs where they close off all our common areas. I got you. Exactly. Take that shit in the hallway. Can't go do it in, in the hallway because people walk through there. I don't know who sniffled and called. Well, guess what? Take it in that closet. So, okay. Man, you're not here. That's your closet. I haven't been in the closet since episode all 19. Right. Closet again. Yeah, because Jay stamped the closet as his own. I can't even go in there no more. Let's get to the podcast, man. Come on. Uh, Sade. 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 Let's get to the podcast. All right. So segment one, talking point segment. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. It's that quarantine so, bullshit. Quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. So my topic today is learning someone's foundation slash their roots. Mm-hmm. You know, and when I hear that, uh, just to go into what that means to myself is, you know, I think that a lot of times, now, like, and this is something I'm even new to learning, or I think a lot of people are new to learning, is like, damn, how much the foundation of someone's background actually matters in the relationship. Because a lot of times what happens is you go and y'all are dating, y'all are talking, you don't know the foundations, and you start to see that little patterns are coming out that you didn't know before, so it's kind of like new to you. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, one can be like somebody's estranged relationship with like their mother or their father. Mm. Right. So like for me, I have a strange relationship with my mother. So like I didn't really realize how that affected me and a lot of my friendships, relationships in general, because like, for example, Jay has a certain level of respect for like for his mom. Not to say that I don't, but like, you know, but me personally, because I don't have that, I don't really have to deal with my mom if I don't want to. Like, I don't like it is just what it is. It's not that it's right or that it's wrong. But by pattern, I didn't grow up fully always with my mom. So like there's times that my mom, I ain't told, I don't have to pick up the phone if I don't want to. Like, you know how some people are allowed to not be in a whatever toxic space they want to. You know how, like, some French be like, you know, but it's my mom. Like, I got to talk to my mom. Me, I don't have that. Like, you've been toxic. I'm not answering. Like, you know what I'm saying? First is, like, where it can get conflicting is, oh like, for gosh. example, if... You okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, like, sheesh. What happened? You just saying... And I'm listening. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. So, like, for example, like, say... This has never happened, but say Jay's mom did something like him, to him. And I'm like... That's, no, unacceptable, like, whatever. He's like, but that's my mom. Like, you know what I'm saying? It could cause some type of friction because I'm like, yo, like, we don't have to have that toxic stuff in our space. Like, if it's my mom, I'll talk to you when I'm over it in a couple days because I don't have to deal with you right now. For example, everybody doesn't operate like that. So that's just, like, one Like, cursing in front of your moms. Like, we be like, yeah, because you be on some crazy shit. I'm like, whoa, oh, shit. You ain't never heard me say that to my mom. You just curse in front of your moms. You go to phone like... So, first of all, I don't curse at my mom. But, you know what I'm saying? My mom also cusses like a sailor. Another pattern, first of all, foundation, right? So... So as naturally, if I'm in a regular conversation with anybody, my mom said, it's not like my first instance, like, oh my God, I can't cuss him for my mom. Because, and I'm not talking about, I'm not like, fuck bitch shit. Like, but if I'm like, damn, that shit crazy. Like, oh you know what I'm saying? God. Like, some people don't do that, but Ooh. I have the leverage to be able to do that. See, oh, Monique has shit. like, like, that's just, that's just my relationship with Picture my mom. Picture me saying, yeah, shit. But okay. <laughs> like, All right. But I was going to cut through the phone. But but also but also I don't think that anybody should be deemed right or wrong for that because there's some people that cuss with their parents and they had a great relationship with their mom. No, I'm you know not saying I mean? like y'all have a great relationship. I'm just saying like yeah. just picture just picture me cursing in front of my mom's. Oh my gosh, she probably reached through the phone and whoo, you yeah. would you would feel the wrath of the motherfucking yeah. motherfucking. But all that- <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is, like you would feel that wrath. <laughs> But nah. But all that to say is, um, you know, like, but just certain background situations, I think, can really heavily affect, like, your relationship sometimes. And that's just, like, one example. Again, that's not an actual situation. But I can see where it actually could be, like, in a further time. Like, you know, even, like, for example, when your mom was here for Thanksgiving and mm-hmm. I was like, I don't want no help in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. You know, some mothers be like, the hell she don't. And, but... 
no offense, if she would have said something, I'd be like, I said, I don't want no help mm. in the kitchen. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, so certain, so what, mm-hmm. so what, are you, what are you getting at with this? Well, just, well, it's a one-on-one conversation. Just mm-hmm. like, what do you feel about background tendencies and patterns and how they affect relationships going forward? Man, so I really can't answer that question, but what the first thing that came to my mind when you said it is, you can recognize something in somebody and they might not recognize it or they might be in denial or however you want to look Facts. at it. But as soon as you bring it up, it's like, it's Facts. the worst thing in the world. It's mm-hmm. like, yo, like you're acting like this because of this and that. Mm-hmm. And like, you don't know me or like it, it, it turns into that instead of yeah. just looking like, you know what, this might be the case. Yeah. It, it turns into something extra yeah. because I'm recognizing something yeah. in you that you Facts. may not see in yeah. yourself or you might just be in denial. That's the first thing yeah. that kind of mind yeah. when Facts. I think about it. But once you say it to somebody else, the first thing they do is deny, deny, deny. You're like, yo. Like, no, that's a fact, though, because, like, you know, there's just certain, like, for example, some some people might have instances where, like, I don't know, men don't have the utmost respect for their, like, their mothers, right? So then they talk to their girlfriends, like, any type of way because they, like, or, like, or, like better yet, some mothers favoritize their sons. Mm. So sons can get away with a lot of things, whether that's like talking to them a certain way or being demanding or expecting their mother to do certain things. And then they get into relationships and they kind of expect the same. This is just a, a common thing that I've seen, like even with females or when I talk to females. So they get in a relationship with a female and they think they're supposed to have their mother in that female. And if you don't get, and you know, and if they're nothing like their mother or they didn't grow up like that, it causes friction. Cause it's like, first of all, who are you talking to like that? Don't demand these things of me. I'm not your fucking mother. I don't have to do that. And it causes a lot of friction. That's one. Um, or same thing, vice versa. Women who don't have dads in the house and then, um, get with men and expect like them to understand like, well, I don't really have to listen to you a certain way. I don't have no daddy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, woo woo. It's the same thing. Like, that's your foundation. You know what I'm saying? But don't think that you can come in building off of that foundation when we need to be really setting our own because that's not going to work. No, that makes hand sense. Hand in hand. Hand in hand. That makes sense. I, um, yeah. Like, for me, I would just say, I don't know. Like, we, we've had little situations and, and uh, like, I would like, this is why such and such. But again, it's like, how, how do you approach that conversation, basically? Well, first of all, I don't think that's ever the key. Like, because we have had a situation, I think we both have done that to each other, where it was like, well, you must act like that because da-da-da, or you. And I don't think that's any, because at the end of the day, nobody's a therapist here, and nobody has those credentials to be able to diagnose anybody. However, I do think it's a fair conversation to ask, like, well, what was your background like? Like, what was how was your dynamic in the house? Or how did you, you know, like... What 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 was your home and parenting style? I don't think everybody's having that type of conversation. Okay, I get it. I yeah. get it. So do you 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 think you're supposed to have that conversation before? Like oh, yeah. Before you get so is it? Yeah, I think that's a conversation that people have to normalize asking in like the dating talking stage. Like, what was like your lifestyle at home? Once you're together, is it too late? I don't think it's too late, but those doors already had open where we probably already had in and outs of arguments or stuff like that because we didn't. So I think that just going forward, if that's our advice point, I would say that that has to be a question in the beginning of the dating stage. Like niggas need to talk about, yo, what was your lifestyle? Like, like, like what was your parenting? Like, how was your household when you were growing up? Did you mm. have two parents? Did you whatever? Like, so that way you can see their fears and their lacks. Like, you I know like what I mean? I like so that. up front, because what happens is when you don't talk about that, you get in a relationship like Jay and I, like we never had that conversation. We did bump heads on certain things like and then don't be and then you say something like, well, you probably like that because it's like, well, first of all, don't say that to me because. Because one, now it is touchy because you know even know my background. Like, you know what I'm saying? And you're getting it, bits and pieces of my background because I probably said it out loud. So now you're more so holding it against me versus talking to me about it. Mm, okay, snap, 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 snap for that. No. Yo, speaking of parents, right? I had this, I had this uh this question, right? And I might be jumping around, but if because of my relationship with my, my mom's, right? Mm-hmm. And the relationship with your mom's, mm-hmm. if my mom stayed with me, right? Mm-hmm. And it's, I'm taking this out of a book from Ozark. But let's say it's my mom's. Let's say my mom stayed with me. And she what had... What the fuck is it? Where is this going? She had... Let's say she 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 was she was, she was was older. She couldn't control, like, her disposition or her... Um, let's just say she had a mental problem. I don't want to say mental. I want to be more realistic. Like, you know, old people, they start to, like, curse you out and shit. They just... They, they stuck in their way. They be now and shit. Yes. And, like, okay. they, you got to clean up after them. And she's uh, older. Uh-huh. And it's our house. And she's just like in the way of what we're doing. Okay. You think that is best 
for me to send her to a a home. But from my experience and me growing up, my mom's never wanted me to send her to a home. But you think that it's coming in between our house. Do you stay and Ooh, deal with it? Child. Or would you leave me? How would you handle that So situation? first of all, I just want to be clear that Jay's mom already had put in stamp, like, you know, when I get old, y'all not going to put me in a nursing home, right? I'm going to live with y'all, right? And I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I already had to understand. Um, woo. So, hmm. I mean, that's a tough one. Um, I'm not going to leave you. Uh, we might have to get a big house where y'all got one side and I got a one side because, like, for real, like, I think that's another thing. Like, you know, I think when you are with somebody, yeah, you sign up to handle everything together. But certain baggages, it can get unfair. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just like, for example, when my little brother was staying with us, like, certain things can be unfair. I think there has to be a fair standpoint. Like, okay, it has to be a compromise. Okay, she could stay for this long, but we're going to have to figure out something she could do. Do we need to get her a, a living nurse? Are we going to have to move the finances around so we could just get her a living nurse and she could have her own little apartment. She don't have to go to a nursing home, but she could have a private duty nurse that is able to care for her. But I don't have that on my resume and that's not something I want to do. I don't want to be a private duty nurse. So I have my own life. I don't expect to have to fulfill those duties. Like I just don't like, you know what I mean? Because no offense, I'm not going to put my mom in a nursing home, but she's going to have to get a living nurse. Cause I'm not, she's not living with me either. <laughs> like, and it's, it's just what it is. So I wouldn't leave you. Um, we would just have to compromise on other options. We mm. would definitely have to look into other options. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. what if I didn't want to compromise though? What if I didn't want to well, get I her think, a living nurse and I'm like, I want to take care of this. Is, uh, this you is my... you have to go live with your mom. We're going to have to live separate. Love you. But we, we still... Gonna... Yeah, we so, how can we, how, so how do you go from living together, being together, and then living separate? Um, well, if you don't want to compromise, then you're putting those resources out there. So there's one thing if you compromise and it's like, okay, we're going to have to have a fair compromise. But if you don't want to compromise, you also have to be ready for those consequences that come with compromise. And then we're not going to be, you're not going to be able to have me at your leisure anymore. We're going to have to split and we're going to have to date this way. It might not be ideal and something that we really want to do, but Hey, there's things we have to do that we really don't want to do all the fucking time. Mm, okay. <laughs> like, interesting. All right. Let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's go on. Uh, so um, we're talking second chances. How long do you wait? So. <clears throat> second it... chances. How long do you wait? What's up? This just that. All right, boom. So I see right here it says the acrimony example. So I don't know if everybody watched acrimony, but what happened basically is Taraji is dating a guy since college, and um, he was into a dream of inventing this super surcharged battery that was going to work very well for million-dollar companies, right? It took him 25 years for him to finally sell this battery. He did sell it for a hundred million, bang, bang, chitty, chitty. However, in that 25 years, Taraji sacrificed all her money to fund the household so that he can continue to work on his dream. He didn't work. She paid all the bills, all the expenses, everything really depleted all her funds. Her house ended up going into foreclosure. He couldn't help her none through this time. By the 20th year, she was fed the fuck up and ends up filing for a divorce right before the so. hit. My question so, to that is, is marriage really to death do us part? Because if it is, that's her fault. Like, that's, she get, she, 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 that's what she get. All right. So when you say marriage is to death do us part, right? What if, you know, that's what you, you, you get into, you, you go, you get married, but then whatever they've been promised you promising you just never seems to come to fruitation i mean because that that okay because so so that means that like I, no, no it's not, it doesn't mean it's not unconditional what if like you keep promising me like baby we're gonna be good and it in 30 years go by and that never happens that ain't unconditional love mm. that's just my point like if, if i say i love you i love you no matter what i'm accepting you for whoever you are your dreams your aspirations, your goals all that I'm, that's what i'm accepting so here's a plot twist right when she when she when she divorced him right he went on started working in a dishwashing and started wor working um at like a restaurant in the back washing dishes and he started so why didn't he do that in the marriage before it got to that point where he could have helped her out when he, she put him out then he finally was like all right well i gotta wash dishes even though he still was chasing his dream that's a good why point. didn't he do that while they were married to get to that point because then she would have felt like she had some help and you were actually trying. That's fair. I think people get comfortable and like, well, we're married. You ain't going to go nowhere. So I don't have to do that. But now you leave and now you're forced to do it. Now you're going to do it. But what about when I was tired and I was working four jobs That's to maintain right. this household? 100% right. 
Hundred percent. What you had to say, Alex? I was just gonna ask because he said unconditional love. Like, do you really think that we as he- human beings can really practice unconditional love? Right, like, right. Is that a right, fallacy? Is right, that something that we we right. want? But like, is it really something that we can obtain? I believe so. Um, but when so. Uh, so let's talk about how okay. So we talk about unconditionally loving other people. I don't even think people know how to unconditionally love themselves. So how do you practice unconditionally loving somebody else when people are still learning to love every part of themselves and we're not there yet? I mean, for hmm. for people, hmm. I can't really speak on people, but I can speak for myself. I love myself, so it's like you think you unconditional. So if you un, do you think you unconditional? Like so that means. You are, if you unconditionally love yourself, right? Mm -hmm. That means in every aspect, you're taking care of yourself to the highest 100% degree. So that means you're eating completely right because you care about your body. That means you're working out every day because you are practicing your your temple being at its cleanest, properest point, right? That means that you are worshiping and and making sure church and everything is in line so that you can be your highest self to go to the heaven. Mm, that means that wait, you are that's, unconditionally. That's not what that means. Why not? That's not just because you love somebody don't mean. No, first, I'm talking about yourself right, first. But, yeah, first. but if you're loving yourself, whoever, just because you love don't mean it's a quote unquote right way to love. It. Everything is a uh, perspective. Everything is um, subjective. You get what I'm saying? So it's like just because I don't do those things don't mean that I don't deem those things important. Like if I. I might eat meat, pause, because I think that's, I need my protein. Somebody else might think you can get proteins through somebody else. Like, like, I don't know. Like, that's just like, I can, I, I can so, eat meat and I can, and so I still can think I'm taking care of myself just because I don't agree with a vegan or somebody don't mean that I'm not taking but, care of myself. But what to I me. say is like, right, my mom's, it doesn't, it doesn't mean you don't love yourself. Right. But there's a lot of things that everybody can do a lot better to fully and entirely show that you love yourself in its entirety. I think it is a walk in a journey because every time you get better at giving yourself more love, it doesn't take away the love that you have for yourself. But it does mean that you still have a ways to go with properly loving Fair. yourself so, to the highest of degree. Without dis- everybody, without 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 disagreeing with you, right? I think the word love is just subjective. Point blank, period. Like I feel like you have your definition of love, and you love to the best of your abilities until you learn how to love more or to love better. I love myself to the best of my ability right until now. right until I learn how to love better. So to answer the question, of course, I think I love. Okay. I think I so brain tease, love right? So brain tease, right? So if you say like, and I'm not disagreeing with you. This is just to pick brains, right? Mm-hmm. So boom, you love yourself to the best of your ability to that de- to to your best of abilities of right now. Yeah. However, your cue, everybody, resources and knowledge is right there. We can go find it in any book we go by. We can find ways repetitively by ourselves. Yeah. So if you're not looking for the knowledge to get even more right now then can you honestly say that? Because the resources are there. You can find out. Like, I just don't understand the rebuttal because I feel like... It's not a rebuttal. I was picking brains. I made that A brain team is a rebuttal. That is not a bad thing. I'm just saying it wasn't a rebuttal. I wasn't... A rebuttal, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going back. I'm just, I was picking brains just throwing it out there to get you to answer it. That's, right. that's what I don't think that... Uh, I feel like... When you when you love yourself, you can be searching other ways. You can be researching and other <clears throat> other things. Like you're not gonna be able to research all Everything. things, right? right. So right. like I, my my way of researching might be ways of making myself a better person, far as mental. My ways can be making myself a better person, far as physical. Like that yeah. might be the what I'm focused on at right. that time, and that means that I'm I'm I love myself, right. so I'm taking care of myself this way. Right. Again, love I think is just subjective. Boom. So just because I'm not doing what you deem is important to you at just certain stages, mm-hmm. don't mean that. I don't think is important for myself and that's why i like i don't want to say i hate but I, I hate those like fake woke or not even fake those woke people that like try to push their agenda and their and their opinions on you like yo yeah. this is how it should be like yeah. my god that's what you think because yeah. i can and i only say that because i had a conversation with a vegan and they was just saying how it's so important and you need to do this and i'm not yeah. saying that it's wrong or right however i know people that lived into 100 years old that ate meat all, all all their life and ain't really eat the healthiest and they still were happy. Like I know people that that lived to ninety, so it's like, yo, like we can't really say what is so going what. Going back to unconditionally loving somebody, you said that she didn't unconditionally love him then, right? So that's your definition. Because what if in that point she loved him to the best of her capabilities, where she couldn't do it anymore? And what I wanted to add in real quick, because what I get. With Jason, what really, really I get what both of you guys are saying. Mm-hmm. I think the key term for it is like love language because everybody has a different type of love language. Right. So I think are that is like. Thing? I think you need to cut this on live. Oh, yeah. That I mean, we could, yeah, we could take it off. Yeah. Turn the hookup. You got to watch. You got to watch. You got to watch. <laughs>
Yeah, I said I lost my train of thought. Sorry, Joel. <laughs> it's all, it's all right. good. You can take the whole thing, uh, Monique, and just take the whole uh, piece, like the whole pole and shit. Or just, uh, um, why well, make you just grab the whole thing? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Just make sure you don't hit in her face because you know Alex was. <laughs> you, Joel, 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 you were speaking on love languages, by the way. Yeah. So what I was saying is, I think what Jay is getting at is like everybody has their different love languages, and even when it ties into loving just take yourself. Take the phone off the piece. My bad, Joel. I'm gonna. No, just take like just take the just slide the phone up. No, just just yeah, just just yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go, there you go. It's all good. It's all good. I'm confused. It's all good. It's all. I'm sorry, Drew. One more time. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. I was just saying that I feel like I, I agree with both parties. Like I agree with what Shade is saying because I do feel like a lot of people do not know how to love their self, and I agree. Like, how can you genuinely say you love someone else if you haven't took the time to properly love yourself? Mm. But when it comes to loving yourself unconditionally. I feel like love languages are different. So what you may do to love yourself more may be different than what Sade mm -hmm. may do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even in that movie, Acrimony, I agree. I feel like he could have been doing a lot more to show her, hey, babe, I'm here, I'm trying, yeah. I'm helping. I understand that it didn't pop off yet, but eventually it's going to get there. I feel like that would have made a huge shift in it. On top of that, you cheated on her, and then, you know, it was like other things right. that was happening right. on top of that. So I feel like those things factored in as well. Right. And he I, cheated okay, on and her in school okay. and, like, in college, Okay, though. but and also, I also think, I also put that on her, too, because something I kept saying in the movie, and it was like, yo, you didn't have to tell him you had that 350000 that your mom gave you all that. You could have helped simultaneously and still took care of yourself at the same point. Like, whoa, look, whoa. I'm putting 100000 away to myself, and that's not for hold you. Up, hold up, that's hold up, hold up, hold up. That's not for you. That's so we, for me and my security. What's the word when you don't tell somebody something? Not, I'm not saying, the, what I'm not saying, yeah, nah, no, um, I'm not saying don't tell, but I'm not saying, let me clarify said, that. Let me clarify oh, that. Oh, let oh, me clarify. Oh, I'm not saying she shouldn't have told him, like, hid it from him. What I'm saying is she didn't need to be as open with that money is going to scarce, scarcely just go amongst us both. You could have been very clear, like, okay, I can help you some, but I cannot help you with everything. Where was the point where she put her foot down? Like, look, I know this is your dream, but I have to keep my mom's house that my mom died and left me because it cannot get foreclosed. So therefore, there's going to be times I cannot help you. I love you. It don't mean I don't love you any less, but I have to look out for me too. I don't think she did a good job at looking out for herself. And what she did I was agree. she did so much, she got resentful, but realistically, Basically, he didn't do what he wasn't doing, but she should have been worrying about herself and making sure she also took care of herself. Meanwhile, he was chasing his dream, doing what he needed to do for him. You, she, to me, I think took it still paid much. off though. He gave her four million. No, yeah, but this was twenty five. Ten, he gave her ten million. He gave her ten million. But what I'm saying, this is before the money even hit. This is before the divorce. This is before twenty years of self destructing when that she could have had. A hold of a long and then time I ago. I also want to add too, though. I understand. Don't get me wrong when I'm saying this. Mm -hmm. All right, I understand he gave her ten million. That's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But if she invested all that time, her heart, her soul into this man, this marriage, it's not and just she, about and the money. she loved him. Oh, yeah. Like it's like, so, she, like I was always 50-50 because I'm yeah. like, yeah, she did. Od go a little yeah. crazy. You know, first I was yeah, like, I she should have just been I was like, like I felt for both of them because I was but like, yeah. damn, this is sucks. Like on both ends, to be honest. Yeah. And people gotta understand that mental health is a real thing. Like after she lost everything, her mother, her mother's house, or her money, or her time, now she gotta get a divorce. Now he was cheating, and now he's back talking to the girl he was cheating with. Yo, some that could break a lot of people. If you're not mentally strong and capable to hold that together, that could break tons of people. That could break like people killing people for their exes and their wives for way less. <laughs> for way less. No, you are, you are, you are. So Man, she should have been patient with my man, but I mean, what I will short, say to, is to get back to the topic though. How long? How many chances? Um, I mean, I don't know. I think we spoke on that last week, kind of, uh, because like you never know. You don't know what it's going to be until it's that. So like you can like I I challenge my I used to challenge myself a lot when it's like yo I don't want to be caught being that stupid person. Like I don't want to quote unquote that stupid person. What I mean by that is like if I see something and I see it's bothering me, I want to exit properly i want to exit the right way and i want to exit exit right rightfully you know what i'm saying righteously so we don't bump heads and we don't hate each other but love it just don't work like that like you only you're only going to leave when you're totally fed up like i don't think i don't know i don't think there's a lot of relationship that leave on quote unquote good terms we used to always be like i want to leave as friends and like i just no, i had a relationship i left on good terms I did. Okay, I ain't saying that you know, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying this i'm just saying i think i had a one i mean i'm not saying it didn't hurt but I, it ended on like we cool like it don't got to be no malice or no riffraff okay all right that's a good question <clears throat> so i have a question guys from monique her question is do you think it's 
possible to unconditionally love yourself and unconditionally love somebody else at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah, I do. I do. I do. I think so. I think so. What I was going to ask y'all, right? So. Speaking on, ah, oh, shit. I was going to say, <laughs> I hate when I like forget what I was going to say. The acrimony thing. Why is it that even though, yeah, he left, he waited till they broke up to, to start working. I feel like women do the same thing, right? Once they break up with you, or once once y'all are broken up, like you'll see her in the gym all the time. Like you'll see her working her ass off. And I'm just thinking, like, yo, if you were doing that while we're in a relationship, we probably wouldn't have been broke up. So I think so I seen something before that said that women like so men how, what was it saying? When men leave the relationship later than a woman or something like that. So like, and I, I'm gonna try to break it down. I, I forgot. A woman, I, for, I forgot. By the time a woman leaves, she already left the relationship or something. Cause like that. yeah. So basically, I think what it is is like. So for example, uh, I seen another quote or something like this. Follow me because I can't verbatim remember. We try, but to it was like, shut up. <laughs> so the man doesn't realize he completely lost out or it's done or it's over till the very end. Yeah. Women build that up. So by the time the relationship ends, you know what? It is time. I'm I ready. Just like said I'm, that too. Right. I was like, like you never know. Well, yeah, man, like like know. like right. Like I'm I'm you know what? I built it like they kind of built themselves up. So by the time it's over, it's like, yo, I'm ready to just get to my best life. Like I wasted a lot of time. Men don't really get it till the really end. So it looks like women might be back in the gym, ready to be on that shit, but that took a lot of mental building to do before they actually did that. Why you can't mentally build in but the relationship? Also, though, like, I don't think, gym, but, also, but also, but also, get on your shit while we together. But also, I don't think that's just a men versus woman thing. I think that, I think that's human nature. So like, for example, I think that sometimes in a relationship, like sometimes partners think like they're, partners are supposed to move simultaneously with them. And what I mean like that, right? For example, you said you ain't want to smoke hookah today. Mm -hmm. And when you came, this is just an example, a very mm -hmm. small, but I just want to show you where it means. So Jay said, I'm not smoking hookah today. So when he got in, he was like, it was almost like, we ain't smoking hookah. I said, I ain't tell you I wasn't smoking hookah. You wasn't smoking hookah. You get what I'm saying? So, and I put that in terms of the same thing. Like if, if sometimes when one person is comfortable or where they at, whatever, the other person kind of, moves shifts unless you just like nah i'm going my way like but a lot of times it's kind of like you move and shift with your partner so if one person is going to the gym it was the other one like you know let's we in there or it could be one person is being lazy and it's like you know i mean we ain't really got to go right now like i know a couple of relationships right now personally that like i mean we ain't going to the gym right now that's not what we doing but sometimes some people might like well i'm going to the gym i love you like you don't got to but i'm going like or you know, I, I don't want to go right now. You don't got to go. You could go, but I ain't going. How do you feel like, about that, though? What? When people be like, yeah, we don't have to go. I'll go on my own type shit. But so I'm not really a person who settles for mediocrity, even in relationships. That's just not who I am. Like, I've never been that way. So, like, for example, there would be times, I don't know, like, I tell Jay, like, I always say to anybody, like, do what you want to do. Like, if Jay, like me, I'm going to get up and I'm going to get dressed for the podcast. That's what I want to do. If Jay don't want to do that, that's his business. That's his prerogative. I'm going I'm, I'm to go do workout when I feel like it, regardless. If Jay don't want to do that, that's his prerogative. Like, I I don't like I don't media like anything I'm like I'm never gonna be mediocre for myself so I'm always I'm gonna go if, like for example one part like you like if you didn't get your hair cut I was still gonna get my hair done if you wanted to sit one way like it's it's just that's just I think it's really a characteristic about amongst people and who they are like I think some people are comfortable like I mean well that's just not what we're doing right now I'm just not that type of person Right, like, I'm just not that type of person. Let's get I'm, to your this or that, I'm right? cute, and I'm at, period, regardless. Let's get to your this or that. Okay. Um, yeah, go on, click on something for me, y'all. <laughs> uh, I think you got to, like, click, click away and then click on it. Try to, like, click off it and then click on it. Y'all in this link shit. It's I like proficient, it though. I like, I like it, it better when you, used to, when you used to write your shit down. Mm. <laughs> well, I needed some help. No, thanks, Jewel, because I needed some help. Oh, that was oh, that was Jewel idea. My yeah, bad. Yeah, no, My I appreciate you. <laughs> All right, we did some. So, Monique, I think we did go past a little past sixteen or something. Like, blah, 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 stop right. Here. Oh, y'all got the cheat code, so you so, ain't never gotta be ready. Okay. Y'all cheating. Okay. Oh, this is all some Ozark shit. So, would you rather be the absolute ruler in a tiny country or an important politician amongst many other important politicians in a large, powerful country? Ooh. I'd rather be an important politician amongst many other important politicians in a large, powerful country. Boy, Alex, what you think? Bruh, North Korea. 
I'm yeah, I was, right was going to say, I'd rather tiny be an absolute roller in a roller. tiny country. I, I in a tiny country. Yeah. I hold my own. I, I feel you. Tiny I just, country. I kind of want to work with a team, you know what I'm saying? Because we can get more money. What team? <laughs> <laughs> so the problem, the problem with having a large team is... There's too many personalities. There's too many egos. There's too many, too many chiefs and too not many, enough Indians. Too many chiefs and not enough Indians, in which is America right now. Right. So th- w- there's no way, you know, we're, we're in riffraff because we don't have one person just having the ultimate say and doing the right thing. It's too easily influenced when there's too many people. Um, you can sway a certain portion to even go up against the the, the good one. If if it's if, if you got a large group of twenty and there's three of them that's evil in that motherfucker, they can sway another eleven. And guess mm-hmm. what? We're now flunked. Like so, yeah. Um, that's stupid. <laughs> okay, would you rather be waited on hand and foot by a jealous significant other or split chores 50-50 with a trusting significant other? Split chores 50-50, easy with a, uh, a trusting significant other. Oh, shit, I, I fell asleep, my bad. Um, oh, you full of shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was it? My bad. Uh, go ahead and see your hypotheticals. I already asked you. Oh, shit. <laughs> I asked Wait, you, what's was the you time? Uh, Where we at right you, now? You, what's the you, time? I got a hypothetical. Okay, Uh-oh. come on. <laughs> yeah, Alex had some good He had the Dr. Evil. I, I got, got one. <laughs> All right, so my hypothetical for this week is Jay has 10 minutes before his biggest award show in his in his life. Okay, I like and this. And his barber pass out <laughs> five minutes before he's going out and half his hair is done. Jay, would you let Sade finish the haircut? I don't know. Put a hat and on. vice versa. Wow! Shout out to LeBron James. Your makeup artist James Sade, because Everybody, he clearly and that's he what I clearly hate. trusts his woman to let him but finish her his shape up. This is why I hate. Period. This is why I hate social media, yo. <laughs> this is why I hate it because you shout see, out to LeBron you see, you see James. That, right? But you don't know what the fuck happened previous. Like you don't know if she was practicing in at home. Like you don't know if she cut his hair before. Like we don't know nothing. The gag All we is, see is we don't know, so don't make up your own. But what but we that's know what is saying. what we know. We, we don't know, know shit. Right now, that she just we, cut his hair. We, we don't know, know her background. All right, we don't need to. Right now, sh- he let her cut his hair. Period. So you gonna you gonna nah. give props to another yeah. nigga? Now nah, wait a minute. Yeah. Now would you let him do your makeup? I could do my the, own. He no, 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 no. <laughs> That's not the question. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, would you let him do your makeup if the roads were switched? <laughs> Now, I don't need no makeup. I could go out there bare face for real, for real. Right. I'm going out right. there bare face pretty Fuck scared. Fuck out of here. I take care of my skin, so I'm going out. No, sorry, y'all. Right. Makeup but artist died. Shout out to... Makeup artist died. Shout I'm out, out to here. those YouTube couples that be on YouTube. I ain't, never, I ain't never seen... So you want to do that? Because no. I ain't never seen no man out here really yeah. doing their girl yeah, makeup. Yeah, I said that shit mad time. Oh. Well. Right. I ain't seen the LeBron Well, shout out shit. to the men who practice behind the scenes doing their girl makeup. Because what you said, they be, you don't know how many times they was practicing. Shout out to nah, y'all for fucking, practicing how to do their eyebrows. Hey, yo, can we get into... Hey, Alex, you said you ain't like Ozark. Shout out, how, how you like Ozark? Spo- spoiler alert, if you if you ain't watched Ozark, you're late and you need to get on it, but we about to talk Ozark. What you think about it? Yeah, because we was fucking late. Everybody don't watch Ozark. We was late. Um, So I like Ozark. Um, You know, it's not like my top favorite shows. I wouldn't be like, oh, you absolutely. But I like Ozark. It was definitely something good to watch. Um, I think that... Uh, what I don't like is it's not as action, action packed. packed, but so it can seem a little slow, but it has a good storyline. So the storyline is cool. Um, you know, Ozark is definitely a random ass place. So I think that also <laughs> piqued my interest because we're like, what the fuck is going on over there? So you kind of get to see how it goes down in a small hillbilly town. Um, so it was just something different to watch. It's I guess. crazy. I told my mom to watch it. She was like, it's just too slow for me. Yeah. What I like about it is funny because now I'm thinking about it and it makes sense. But I usually like action movies. I usually like action things a lot. But the thing why is this broke? I don't know. Just leave it alone. The thing I like about Ozark is the silence, and I like the direction. I like the direct thing. I yeah. like how like they do a great job at being silent. Yeah. So like in it, and that's how real life be yeah. like. They'll they'll ask you a yeah. question, and a person don't like just naturally react. They'll yeah. be like. Yeah, they th- like, like it's, he, he asked, it's, it's raw yeah, in emotion. He, he asked, is what I will uh, say. The guy, um, why, whatever his name is, um, Wyatt, Wyatt asked uh, Ruth, his sister. He was like, "Yo, uh, do you think my mom? Do you think the lady moms will like me?" And she was like, 
everybody likes you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just like, like they do a great job of being silent. They do yeah. a great job of the music. They bring, they do a great job of the it's camera. Good raw emotion. Yeah, that's like what they, I like. I it's love that, and it's like, it's like it's almost it almost makes you feel. I didn't mean to cut you off, but it almost makes you feel like, damn, if this shit happened to me and I was in a small town, like, damn, it very well can go like this. Like, yeah, like it, it had some feel that gave you like, ah, this, I can see where this could be possible. To be honest, like, facts. you know what I'm saying? Like this, this, this ain't it's abnormal, but it's not like, like awesome, when, um, you know? When the shorty, uh, when the shorty, um, brother died or whatever. Mm -hmm. And when she had to get him killed, like she was the fact that they had her in a van for like two days, drinking liquor, like just, just being drunk. And, and they just, wrote it out. They yeah, wrote you know what I'm saying? They wrote it. It wasn't just like rushed. It wasn't like all right, yeah. to tomorrow she back home. Like yeah. it went into the next episode. Yeah. She's still in a, in a van yeah. drinking and, and shit. And when they came back, she still in the bed. Like yeah. I can't. Like it, it was raw that. emotion. Yeah, I, I, I like that. that. Um, but like I said, if you honestly, it can be slow. If you're a person who needs like shit, come on, like so. I watched Money Heist when I was getting my hair done for nine hours because I had to sit there. And um, I kind of felt like Money Heist was the exact opposite. It was so much, but it was so not enough. Like, so that's kind of where I realized I was like, oh, I like Ozark because it was so much like going on, but it didn't really give me a proper storyline on the buildup and how it led to it. And it was really rushed really quick. And it just was like, this is a little unrealistic. I don't really see this happening. Mm -hmm. So. That's how I feel. Shout out to Ozark. If you if you haven't got a chance to watch it, you should Ozark. definitely check it out. <clears throat> 50 Cent says he would choose 6 9 over his own son. Because <sighs> they had a relationship. Because it's... Okay, whoa, pause. Not that type of relationship. I mean, Daddy-son relationship. Yeah, they had they had a... a, a push, I think they're just trolls. Troll one and troll two. They're the, you know what I mean? I think... Outside of the snitching, I think 50 Cent feel like he ain't no different than he is. I just feel like 50 Cent can't get over his beef with Preem. And the fact that his son <laughs> took a picture with Preem's son is just like... <clears throat> yeah. But I mean, 50 Cent's son did a lot of Yo, things that ain't like... Yeah, honestly. and it, honestly, you gotta... It's okay. Something really has to be serious for him to just like fuck that nigga. Is that, like his is own that son. Though? Yeah, hell yeah. It's like... Your son, so on, let me his ask son, let me ask his something. firstborn. All right, I get it. Come on. However, I, I don't look at, at it, and y'all might think differently, but I, I don't look at it no differently than any other family member. I know there's a plenty of friends that you have that you would choose over your own brother, probably, or sister. Like, it's friends out there that did a lot for us that we probably ain't never, we probably haven't, don't know when the last time we seen our brother, sister, or cousin, or aunt, or even parents at that at that point. But it's somebody that, that wasn't necessarily your biological mother, your biological father, your biological brother, but they, they stood in but times you don't and disown, treated... But I'm saying, like, yeah, that might be true. I'm sure there's, fam like, friends that you fuck with over family members. However, to completely disown them. I mean, he just said he, he would choose six nine. But I, like he I said, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, it's, it's plenty of situations we could count on our hands, or like probably more than that that we can be like, yo, that people in this world would choose a family relative or a, a family friend over the, their own blood. I don't know, cause I, you know, like if I, like if we talk about disowning, right? Like you know, what I'm saying I got a lot of tight friends, but when it comes to like I don't know, like say my little brother, like if it was like some life or death, I'm picking my little brother. All that's right, my blood. That's my little brother. Let like me, let me ask you I this. might fuck with y'all heavier, but that's like that's my kin. Like that's let me, like let me you ask know? you this. Yeah, not your little brother, but y'all have a great y'all been together your entire life. Right. Let's say your best friend that you said you was going to choose over me yeah, last week, Kayla. Twenty years. Over we ain't gonna say nobody name. Yeah. Over one of your sisters that. You probably haven't even seen or like. And what type of scenario though? It just, gotta be a scenario because that's what I'm saying. Like, and, and, I don't need to disown my sister to fuck with my and, best friend right. more. Like, I, I don't have to do that. He just, I'm just going about the sentence. It says okay. 50 Cent says he would choose six nine over his own son. And <clears> in a situation <throat> where you had to choose, like, you can make your own analogy up. In a situation you, you had to choose, would you think you would choose Kayla over one? You don't have to choose if, a sister, if, but if it's life or death, I'm choosing my sister. All of them. All of them. Over Kayla. If it's life or death, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's I, like that's that's my family. Like you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, I mean, at I the end of the nah, day, I, like, at the end of the day, I'm choosing my sister. Like well, I think it's I'm different for me. Sister. Like like my my brother is not even my blood. The guy I call my my brother is like Antoine. You know what I'm saying? Like and he don't even you don't even see him that much. I'm choosing him over a significant amount of my blood family. But again, that's because I don't have a. a a real relationship with my family I don't know them So like it, It's nothing against them It's just That's my fa Like my brother Blood or not That's who I deem my family Well let's talk in terms of this Like my child <clears throat> My child 
I think it gets real different when we talk about your child. We're it, not talking about brother, sister. I'm talking about my I child. I said we can't talk about this because your child is... We, 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 in order to make a, an analogy fair, I feel like you have to put all the variables have to be the same. So because your child is with you all the time, that changes the variable. His son is never with him. Like... As we seen, six okay. nine was with him more than his son. So that's why I'm asking but, a friend but, or somebody. Right, but that's so <clears throat> I, the reason. So I'm just hypothetically right. I wasn't with my child all the time. I still would pick my child. But we don't. If you hypothetically, we don't know that. If you if you was if your child was 16 years old and your child disrespected you mad times, your child disowns you, <clears throat> and you had a little girl that just came out of nowhere and you took care of her. She loves you like a mother. You loved her like a daughter. But I mean, I again, I don't, I can't say so, that because so, it's, it's right, not here. Even, even that, like, he wasn't taking care of 6 9 That's not, wasn't their relationship. They were heavily more friends than dad and son. So to even put that, that's not a fair variable because he wasn't taking care of him like his own son. Like, he wasn't living with him. They wasn't that tight. They're cool. They're really cool, but they weren't that tight. We so don't like, know how tight they were. All right, though. but you just said they was that tight. No, you don't no, know no, that I, either. No, I didn't say that they were doing yes, that. Yes, you did. I didn't say they yes, were you doing did. that. I said, you said if they, you met, I didn't okay. say they were doing but that. But I'm comparing it to the variable of this. So they're for if I had a, a a girl who looked up to me and I'm mentoring her and I'm you know what I'm saying we cool and she come over we have dinner all the time and I'm mentoring her but I haven't seen my son or daughter for 16 years because he's wild disrespectful and some shit went down that's still my son I get it all right what up? I was gonna say um to add to that who do you feel like the responsibility falls on to maintain that relationship 50 or his son like when you so, say like the relationship both. like you don't see both of them. it's both of them okay. cuz his, his son's old enough um and I, I think it's both of them um it's, it's the both mother. of them it's okay. both of them it's the mother we need the next variable is the mother because you like uh, a lot of times as a child you only know as much like you, yeah, you well, only know as I, much as your, your But mother. when you're, no, because when you're a certain age, it's your own duty to go do your own research. You can't keep holding on what my mama said, my mama said, my mama said all these years. You can go have your own face-to-face -face conversation and have your own analogy. So I can't, I say the mother in the beginning had a big fault in this, right? However, when the child was older, they can very well heal their own forgiveness. Like they can go if, get their if, own if forgiveness if, my if they loyalty, want to. If my loyalty lies with my moms, I don't have shit to forgive you but I don't have nothing to say to you like my mom well, said what it is and that's, but, that's what it and, is and the same thing for it like if I'm your dad and you pick your mom loyalty over me then I understand it then just understand that I don't gotta fuck with you either right straight up like that's why I said it's on them both so, it's not I'm saying it's on them both um period yeah I mean yeah oh ooh yeah yeah Mayweather is facing 99 years so wait Mayweather don't fuck with his daughter I never, I don't know nothing about uh, that. I know before that he used to heavily be with Yaya. Um, I think this is new. Uh, because, like, I remember seeing him post her, him and Yaya used to post, and she'd be at his fights and all that. So, um, I think, so I think the situation with Yaya is a, is a typical young girl rebellious or rebellion. My bad. Uh, uh, again, be, like, I, just doing what she wants to do as her own young adult, walking into her own young adult and not listening to nobody. Yo, people yeah. be... I feel like people be wanting to be down so bad, like, well, what? because like it all, I don't say always, but it be those rich motherfuckers that just don't want to be in the same light. <clears throat> I don't want to follow the footsteps of, I don't want to be known as this person's daughter or something like, shut the fuck up and enjoy the fruits of your parents' labor. Like, yo, like mm -hmm. people just be wanting to be down so mm -hmm. bad instead of just living the life that they was given I or. I Their think it's a lot more than being down, though, because I think, like, you got to understand, like, rich or not, they still young kids. Like, you know what I'm saying? I think that people think when they have money, like, their mindset, like, changes. No, it fucking don't. It's actually worse because they never had to work for shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's just, uh, to me, she's no different than the average 16 to 19-year-old girl just doing what the fuck she want to do, finding a bad boy. That she, It's the same, to me, it's the same story. I've seen it over and over again. You're 16 and 19, you get a bad boy, you fucking love it, you love the thrill, he's running you through the fucking hoops, and you're doing whatever to stay with that nigga at all costs. I see that story one too many times. And I think that right now, it's just that young boy happens to be young boy. And she's not just dating your typical bad boy Locally, she's dating a young boy with millions of access to do anything he fucking wants, and it's ten times more harsher on her at this point. But damn, let's talk about the real situation. She's facing ninety nine years for stabbing. Sad. Her. That's um, crazy. my thing is like young kids just being so like they move so like step like I couldn't even like if it's not life or death I could never see myself like you be you really would have to be trying to kill me for me to stab you. Like, we're not just fighting and I'm just pulling out no. And I think, like, that's just young people. Like, they just really just have no self-control. 
like lack a lot of self-control. I mean, but let's let's give the the back the background of NBA YoungBoy, right? From what we even see on social media, it might be worse in real life. If you're getting into it with somebody that he's associated with, I don't know what the fuck she's capable of. So I mean, I'm gonna protect myself at all costs. I will say that. What I wanted to talk about was how old is she? Is she she's like 19? AG? She's 18. 19. 19. All right, and this might sound crazy. However, I feel like a lot of us make mistakes when we're young, and some mistakes are too costly. Like, but yeah, that's true. But some mistakes are worse than others. However, I feel like we have to do a better job at. I don't want to say giving second chances, but being not lenient, but really understanding and not just because we're about to throw her entire life away because of a mistake. I think not we should. Weird. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, the problem is the girl's pregnant. So when you stab somebody, I yeah. think she did it four times. It's now attempted at murder, not on one life, but, but two twice, lives. Yeah. Exactly. And um, also people got to understand when you stab somebody four times, like anything over once is rage. It's yeah. not self-defense. It's, it's rage. Like, kind of like premeditated. So, right. At that exactly. Point, at that point, you know what you're trying to do. And the thing is like, yeah, we can be like, okay, so this is my problem, right? People make mistakes and leniency and all these things, but like, Yo, the minute you pick up a knife, a gun, and you decide to, you have to be ready for all consequences. She could have picked up a bottle, banged her in the head once. She could have picked up a chair, knocked her with a chair. But the minute you picked up a deadly weapon, that was on you. And you got to be ready to face the consequence. No different than when we say 6 9 joined the gang so he knew what was coming with it. You pick up a knife and you ready. Like, that's why they said when you pick up a gun, you better be ready to pull that shit. Right. Because it ain't no play play. Like that's that's the, like there's no play play. So I don't know who she was trying to impress, young boy, or because that's what young boy talk about in his songs or whatever the fuck he got going on. And now you want to be that down ass bitch? Well, then you have to accept what comes so with that. So did the baby die? The baby die or the baby's um, alive? I don't think so. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So what actually, they're officially charging her with is ag- aggravated assault uh, with a deadly weapon. So Especially because supposedly with. he put her out. So she snuck back in. That's the story. She snuck back in. So therefore, you're also, you came for it. Like nobody, like, so for example, so wait, so I thought, you come at me and you're fighting me, whatever, whatever. And you're attacking me and I can't, and I grab something, but you came at me. But if I sneak in the house to you, I'm now, the aggressor. I, I'm the aggressor. Right. Exactly. So no, I get, I my get wife, <laughs> this one right here, what do you say? This who, this girl right here, my wife. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> that, that, is, that, is, that is crazy. Like, uh, I don't like none of these little n- young niggas. I'm going to just keep it a stack. Like, first of all, they're all little demonic little Satan spawns. They act like they fucking worship the devil or something. Like, I don't like none of these little young niggas. Like, they have, they're out of pocket. Like, it was mad blood on her. This is crazy. Like, just some, like, I couldn't imagine my 19 year old daughter being with a guy. And his girlfriend come in and stabbing my daughter. Like, do you know? Yeah, send that bitch to jail. I'm sorry. Like, let, let me tell you something. Though? Let me tell you something. My 19-year-old <laughs> daughter is at her man, baby that whatever house, right? And his ex or girl or whatever come in and stab my daughter. What? Come on. What? Sure like, I really feel like because she's Mayweather's daughter, and I could be wrong, but I feel like a lot of these celebrity kids, they want to be about the hype, but they don't think they're going to have to deal with the consequences Con- right, that a regular team right. would right. have to deal with. They probably trying to make her an example, too. And yeah. just to be frank, like, I mean, it's embarrassing. Like, I, like, out of all the things, I'm not sending you out in the world to do this, and I damn sure didn't raise you like this. Like, so don't think that her, she like, for anybody to feel like, Floyd's supposed to be out here while defending. Like, yo, what is he supposed to say? Facts. What no. is he supposed to say right now? My 19-year-old daughter is out here chasing behind this wild, Satan, demonic little boy who's fucking her and 100 motherfucking girls and got her in these situations because, look, no, nobody, like, what is he supposed to say? What is he supposed to get up here and say? Nothing. Right, right. Like, like, why you want to fight her? Because she probably was getting dragged. It's, like, she should have, daddy should have taught her how to have some hands. So, moving Because let me tell you, she should have been able to kick that knife out of the pow, pow, pow. Niggas should have had I mean, moves for days. Fuck out of here. She's she, she not a superhero, babe. <laughs> We're moving on, man. Alex. 
come to the to the stage. <laughs> so uh, Bernie Sanders drops out of the presidential you race. Pour me no second cup. You yes, different. Sir. Okay, tell me. Um, this is mm-hmm. all you, bro. Uh, so yeah. What does Bernie, this mean to us? Like, what, what? Why do we care about this? Man, I mean, this is all. <laughs> why for me? It's a, it's opinionated. Ooh. I mean, to be honest, but uh, Bernie was the progressive candidate you know what i mean he okay. was uh, all for universal health care he was big on okay. eliminating student loan debt he was basically what some would call a socialist he was a democratic socialist yeah. um, wow he was all for equality he wanted us to he wanted to really tax the rich rich and like really feed the poor you know what i mean do the shit we talk about we every day like literally time. every day okay. but um and he um, lived that life for his, like that's who he was like, and overall. it's funny because joe biden was the he was my commencement speaker at Morgan's graduation but like when i looked into his uh records and stuff like that he's progressive for his time but what we are looking for in, in a candidate are like as far as millennials and millennials moving forward uh that was bernie for a lot of us i mean i can't speak for everybody yeah um but uh now we're kind of forced we know who our candidate is and now yeah. the question is whether or not who, uh who he chooses as his vice president yeah. so why 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 did he drop out? Man, I mean, after South Carolina, Bernie said, I mean, Biden said that he was going to win South Carolina. He got that momentum and he just started whooping ass, literally. Um, so it was just them. It was three of them. It was him, uh, Bernie Sanders and Tulsi, but she was never in it. So if, if he wouldn't have dropped out, did he still have a chance? Like, I mean, mm. realistically, no. But I mean, it was so yeah. he kind of like, again, after South Carolina, the next Super Tuesday, he 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 lost it all. And then on top yeah. of that, the coronavirus has, has been changing everything yeah. for everyone. Yeah. At his age, yeah. he can't really be out here in yeah. the forefront. Right. Neither can Joe Biden, but right. you know, he already had Biden already had the lead. So he he could just stay yeah. comfortably in the lead. Yeah. But as far as Bernie, Bernie to needed to go out work. and campaign yeah. and go do a lot more that he can't. He's limited yeah. to because of the coronavirus. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. So um So we're basi- fucked, y'all. <laughs> so, so basically Joe Biden created the uh, coronavirus. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna say that. I mean to some people it's five G, so I don't know what the reality is right now. Look, it's a lot of things. So how going bad out there. is Joe Biden? He's not bad. He's I wouldn't not. necessarily say he's bad, but he's not as progressive as we would want. And I mean but the Alex, question when you is said we would want like what is one Some would want. What, That's what, what I was gonna what, say. What, some what, would what, want. Okay, what is one of the things of what healthcare. some will want. We want health Like universal health care. Or like healthcare. really big cuts on student loans right. and taxing the rich right. for the um right. and as far as like certain communities, mm-hmm. Joe I mean, I don't know what his stance is as far as certain yeah. communities, but I know where Bernie Sanders was on the other side. So yeah. he had a lot of people from the LGBTQ community. Yeah. Um and that were really supporting him. Yep. Whereas now we're stuck with Biden. Do you so okay. So when you say stuck with Biden, um, you know, because I ain't gonna say stuff you know because uh, he was my choice I'm, in the beginning. I'm, I'm, he was in, I was his choice in the beginning. I'm, Hell no, I'm pro Bernie most definitely, but just to play devil's advocate, uh, a lot of even black rich people were not pro Bernie. Yeah. So, so because so so this is something some something some something someone said stuck out to me. It's like yeah, people think they want this until they get rich. That's what I was thinking. And because you know, as young millennials, a lot of that that's the goal. Is that what you really want? Like, you know what I mean? I think like a lot of people really have to do more research on where their futures are, where they want mm-hmm. their future to go to look to see in those years of when they suspect their calculations of them elevating, who would they want at that time? And it's interesting that you said that because this is a whole, but like when you look at Floyd Mayweather, we're, Floyd Mayweather, we were just talking about, um, he's a Republican openly. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He's publicly said A lot it. of them are. And it's it's not a personal, like people will look yeah. at it as far as yeah, personal beliefs not. and stuff like that. But it's business for a lot mm-hmm. of these people. Um, but you have on the other side, you have the Carters who are progressive and mm-hmm. they're Democrats and mm-hmm. they su- openly support it. Mm-hmm. So it's a matter of like, how much are you willing to give yeah. uh, back or who to do you your wanna, consumers? Uh, right. Or, who, yeah, or, you know or like mean? giving back to, like what would you want for your community? Because right. you already made it. Like who would you want for your, your 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 family who hasn't made it yet, your your you know what I mean, your nieces and nephews who are estranged and you probably don't know like that, but you want your family to be well. So who would you want in your community at that time? Exactly. So yeah. I mean, long story short, I would say just do your research. Yep. Um, I mean, at this point, I'm voting for Biden regardless. Oh yeah, because uh, Trump needs watching to these uh, coronavirus press conferences and stuff like that. 
I still don't understand how this man won, but he did. But, you know, yeah. we got another shot at it yeah. in November, hopefully, yeah. if they don't push it back. So basically, <laughs> get out there and vote. Get out there and vote. Make sure you still vote. That's really the thing. Vote, vote, vote. Yeah, man. Vote. Go vote. Happy Resurrection Day. Happy Resurrection fucking day. Yeah. Oh, that, At the sorry. same time? <laughs> no. I, I thought I was bad. God damn. I didn't mean it like that, y'all. God knows my heart. He know. Do he? Yeah. Yeah, he know, all right. Yeah, he knows my heart. Because he told me about it last night. He ain't tell you about me. He said that motherfucker. He's like, yo, watch her. He was like, AJ, watch her. No. He said, he, he said, he said, any, he said any, even the devil God, was an God angel. Already he said, watch God already her. said anything that, and anything, they they will not prosper. What'd he say? Okay, they well, will they, not prosper. Anybody, you don't even know it. They, they God said, prosper. God said anything, they, they will not prosper. What, what, what did he say? What, what I was about to say. I don't know. Even, you exactly, ain't saying. So I just said it. I said they will not prosper. Who? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. You. Right. You. Like, <laughs> I know the, no shadow all, against me shall prosper. First of all, like, he don't even pray, so stop. I don't pray. Girl, I pray every day. You don't never pray with us. That don't, what? That's, What? That men's don't pray over their family. That's the problem. I pray right for here. you. I pray for all you. the time. You okay. and Amaya, cut the shit. Look now he now he vexed. Look at him. I'm mm. not vexed. You just episode zero two one was brought to you by. <laughs> yeah. Hey man. Happy Resurrection Day. Shout but out to Bel Air. You already know. Resurrection man. Um, Day. Shout out to Bel Air. I mean they they are like supplying us, so we gotta do business, right? I feel like I know the metrics, so keep on going because it was a joke to the camera. Keep on, keep on. Shout out to shout out to uh, Luke okay. Belair, official Belair. Thank you. You know what I'm saying. Most is on you. Shout out to Catch Twenty Two. Shout out to whoever did shot their hair. Got a feeling looking Caramet. cute and feeling a little. You know what I'm saying. Shout out to the whole gang. Shout out to Alex. Shout out to Jewel. Shout out to Monique. Shout out to Wyman. You already know episode zero two one. The Scorpio podcast. The Gemini it. Scorpio podcast. Oh, selfish. Sorry. The Gemini Scorpio podcast. We out. We out. We out. Cheers.